Hi again, everyone, and welcome to another episode of RV Business Capital Talk, sponsored by Eric Sell. I'm Rick Kessler, and with me, Sherman Goldenberg, and joining the two of us today is Claude Donati. Claude, of course, is the managing member of Nexus RV, the uh, going into its 14th year next year. That's right. Congratulations. Yes, it's uh, been an interesting road we traveled. <laughs> Overall, I've got about 29 years under my belt in the RV industry, so I feel like I finally at a point where I think I've seen most of what I'm going to see. <laughs> year 14, year 14. For, 14 for at company. Nexus. Yep, 14 years at Nexus. We started in 2000, really at the end of 2009, where we wow. formed our corporation, but we started producing in 2010. That's amazing. Yeah, well, thank you for joining us, first of all. Yep. But let's have you, um, the RV industry is in, a, I don't know if it's a unique market condition right now, but the market itself, I, I don't know, are, are we are we looking at a light at the end of the tunnel? Where do you think we're at? You know, I, I used September to be my barometer to answer that question. Prior to that, I felt like the dealers were busy reducing their inventory and we were busy redoing our product lineup, make, cleaning up some design and interior design opportunities. And September was going to be the month where go to Hershey, hear what the retail has to say. We had our owners group come the week after Hershey. So get a little more of the loyal retail customers and then finish it off with a week with the dealer network. And for us, I felt like it went far better than I anticipated. Um, when you talk to many of the dealers, they, they were just so incredibly concerned about the headwinds such as interest rates and the economic uh, just grumblings that go on with Democrat, Republican, that I felt like we couldn't have a good show. We couldn't have a good turnout. And my feeling now is that the retail customer that I sell to, which is a little older, a little more affluent, they are not as impacted by the headwinds that are bothering everyone else. The interest rates don't impact them. Their 401ks are pretty strong still. The inflation actually kind of maybe helps the valuations of some companies because inventories go up and you, you seem to have more net worth as an organization when you do that. And the result for us was we sold five more units at Hershey than we did the year before. We came back, we had our largest owners group. We had a hundred rigs here. And that helped uh, maybe indicate that Things people were excited to be RVing. And then the dealers came in. And although I was very disappointed with the attendance, I felt like we only got about one third of what we were hoping to get in terms of attendance. The people that came placed orders with us and continued to see the value that we're bringing to the party. So I, I leave September feeling pretty good about where Nexus is. I'm very scared about next year because everybody tells me I should be. <laughs> and, and so I don't want to be the foolish optimist out there and everybody else is laughing at me. Is that because of uh, next year being a, a general, you know, presidential election? Yeah. Well, I would tell you when you hear that oil could be at $150 a gallon, you're hearing Ukraine might escalate to another level. You know, you have all these global things that impact us now that they didn't before. Um, and then certainly the presidential uncertainty is is on our minds because, look, we may find ourselves getting out of it economically, but all of a sudden May comes around and my customers, the 60, 70 year olds, they are active participants in the in the election. They are running the polls. So their <laughs> attention is going away from RVing for a bit while they focus on trying to get their parties and, and the democracy mm -hmm. you know, of the election through the through the time it needs. So I'm a little worried about that. You're saying you, that you see some strength in the motorized products in which you specialize, right? That's right. I, I do. I think um, the interest, if there was one word that I would tell you or phrase that is impacting our, our business and probably the dealers is interest rates. That's it. The fuel price is not a problem. Unemployment doesn't feel like it's a problem. The commodities are coming down and, and maybe inflation is still an issue, but it, interest rates, the dealers can't afford to stock the inventory that they had before. So they're going from carrying 200 units down to 100 units. And there are manufacturers that lose. And as a privately held smaller company, we're always at risk of being that company that gets cut back. And we're, we saw some of that with, with the big change that they're 
unwilling or um, they, they don't see the value in staying true to a small manufacturer. They, they feel like they have to nurture those bigger feelings, which ultimately could be a problem for them because we are an alternative. Mm. Your, your strongest products, just so that our trade audience gets a good grip here, is what? You're well, we, we have the best market share for our brands in the Super C segment. We have products that start with a 4x2 Verado built on the GM. Then you can go to 4x4, which is the Rebel. And then we have the Ghost and the Wraith, which are built on the International uh, Super C MV chassis. <laughs> to get a below 200,000 retail, we have about a 74% market share. So we're trying to stay super competitive for those people that maybe can't afford a full blown super C with three, $400,000 price tag. We're trying to keep it real for the blue collar and people that don't RV full time, but want to have a, a super C commercial truck chassis. They don't want to have a V10 engine. So that's our bailiwick. Claude, you mentioned at the Hershey show, you sold uh, five more than you did the previous year. Um, was that a mix of product for you? Yeah, it was about an even mix uh, for us. And there were a lot of units that had no trades. If mm. that was a, one of the trends that I picked up on, which tells me kind of the mortgage issue with the interest rates. I mentioned for the dealers, it's very complicated because they can only stock so much because they can't afford to do what they did the last three years. Retail customers, why? It's like your house. You're, you would never trade out of a house that you have a 3% mortgage to, to get an 8% mortgage and make more payment on maybe a less or equal house. Right. So everybody's kind of paralyzed if you're locked into a current mortgage. One of the other yeah. things that uh, you, you mentioned open house and the traffic was down. Um, we're all assuming that's a circumstance of uh, the continued consolidation going on in the dealer ranks. Is that your take? Oh, I, I imagine that play, paid, played a big part of it, um, but I don't think dealers wanted to fly here, walk in and not provide manufacturers with orders or feel the pressure of you have to order. They came with a plan, the ones that came, some of them came to get rebates from their manufacturer to help continue to sell down inventory. Some came with uh, just wanted to double check a manufacturer's design to maybe see if there's a big improvement. They wanted to come see it and and validate what they've been told over the phone or in videos we've sent out. Um, but I think overall the dealers are, they're not seeing a purpose to come in and place orders. You know, I, I've heard timing of the year for some people on the West coast, they, they complain that it's kind of in an odd time for them. They would rather come in the spring um, and just sell through their current model year stuff. Um, but I, I think it has more to do with the economy and consolidation. You think uh, uh, time of year, uh, I had not heard yeah. uh, people questioning it. Yeah, I, I was a little surprised by it, but it was three or four dealers that on the West Coast, the California dealers, um, they, they, this is kind of their bit, they sell through this season. Normally we had the Pomona show going back to this time of year, um, and they felt like they just got current model year stuff. And now we're trying to promote the next stage. And then by the time they get this, we'll already be in the 2025 model change stuff. So I felt there was a, maybe, maybe even like they wish that show that was uh, in Utah a couple of years ago would have <laughs> happened in March. They wanted that to go down. So that maybe show. those were the four guys that went to that. <laughs> Claude is, so is your sense then that the dealers are are content to, to stand pat until perhaps maybe even spring? Yeah. I, I sense that they are not in a hurry to, they, they don't believe we're through it. Everybody, I heard stuff like we're bumping on the bottom here. Yeah. It's not going to get worse. It's just going to continue to bump the way it is. Many of them think it's third quarter now of next year. Some of them that are a little more optimistic thought it was first quarter. I, I tend to try to lean to the first quarter of next year because otherwise we might as well just cool our jets and not even try it until ne the third quarter of next year. I feel like it's going to come back a little bit, at least maybe temporarily through a seasonal uptick. Okay. Okay. I was, I was doing a little homework uh, before this, just to bring myself up to speed, and um, I, I come up with a a March headline it says uh, Nexus RV named Elkhart Chamber Business of the Year. Well, that would be that would be. Oh, you're talking about last March? Yeah. 
Yes, sir. We we have a couple accolades. We had a good year with that stuff, Sherm. We really committed to improving the community and trying to participate beyond just making RVs. So we leaned into Safe Haven Woman's Shelter in Elkhart. It's a division of the YWCA. And we a couple of years ago, we took a hundred of our employees over there and we revamped the whole facility landscape. We painted, tore up carpet, did some plumbing work, and we've kind of adopted the woman's shelter over there in Elkhart. That's uh, the, the timing is incredible because as you well know, Claude, October is domestic violence awareness month. Um, something uh, near and dear to your heart. I know that. Go ahead. Yeah, we, we are, um, I'm on the board of the YWCA and I've reached out to many of the owners uh, of big companies here in Elkhart. We've uh, we've been on the phone with the RVIA team and we want to really promote the awareness of Domestic Violence Awareness Month, which is October. And it competes with breast cancer uh, in October. So it's kind of always been shadowed. And one of the numbers I heard, it's uh, one in eight women are impacted by breast cancer, but one in four women are impacted by domestic violence. So- wow it's more prominent than people really understand. And it can range from, you know, sexual harassment to physical violence to rape. It's um, a wide spectrum of scenarios that women can find themselves in and, and also children that are uh, in those family units. So we are promoting this month, trying to get every manufacturing facility to put in the woman's restroom area, a brochure pamphlet holder that mm -hmm. gives them an opportunity to, pick some information up while they're in the privacy of their, their restroom that they can reach out and get help if they need it. There's a lot to do and, you know, it can ask for money and do all that stuff. But this was our first big thing. We want to make sure every facility that, that can puts us in the woman's restroom. I will say this, that when we first got involved with the woman's shelter, uh, I was surprised because about half our employees are women which is another reason we all should do this. It, it applies to our employees, our executives, our managers. Um, but I was surprised by the number of people that came up to me and said they used the services of the woman's shelter. People I would never have guessed to have had to go through that, which really mm -hmm. just reinforced the idea that this thing needs to be um, put on auto, you know, let's blow it out there and do some guerrilla marketing and get everybody aware of how important this is. That that's a surprising number to me when you said one in four women. That's I had no idea. It, it it is truly remarkable. We all have mothers, we all have sisters, we have wives, we have daughters. Uh, for us not to embrace this is kind of you know who could be against right. supporting this, right? It's about prioritizing this within your life. And so I, I I'll appeal to all the owners that are going to watch this, all the big companies out there. I won't name anybody, but if you can, please reach out and let's get these these pamphlets into all the restroom areas and really make an impact for our empl women employees to be able to reach out and get help if they need it. And Claude, we talk, we spoke before a little bit, but um, the reason why you want these in the women's bath bathrooms is why, is what? Well, there's information on, on the pamphlets that provide them uh, counseling uh, phone numbers and uh, links that they can go to to get information in the event they're in a crisis mode and need a place to stay. There's people on the other end of that phone that can help guide them. If you have a friend or a neighbor going through this and you just want to report it, and th there's a whole lot of expertise on the other end of that phone that will help people get through that tough mode. And look, the, the toughest part for these people when you sit and interview them is they're scared that first step is the hardest step. But once they once they make that first step, the YWCA and Safe Haven do an incredible job with drug counseling, with domestic counseling, with children counseling, with shelters for the kids. They, they help people get re-established um, with their careers if they have to move. I mean, it goes on and on the number of services provided by the YWCA and Safe Haven. Excellent. Congratulations on, on uh, spearheading that effort. Thank you. Agreed. Um, this is where we could just drop a tough bomb question on you by uh, <laughs> predicting next year or something like that, but we could leave you off the hook. And uh, your thoughts? My, my thoughts are that this reminds me of many years ago when Camping World bought all these great independent dealerships and there was that transition where it felt like they owned every dealership. And ultimately what happened over time, 
some general managers, some new entrepreneurs, some of the younger people in these organizations are going to step up and start their own businesses. And it's going to take a little while to nurture that um, because the same feeling is going on. So I think we're in a little bit of a transition state when it comes to the dealer network. Um, there's going to be some people that don't stay on to these acquisitions like we found 20 years ago. Um, but until then, I think there is a polarization of business right now, making it very tough for medium to small manufacturers and even even medium to small dealerships that are uncertain on what brands they can carry because these big companies are starting to dictate some territory terms and so on. So I think it's a transitional state. I would say 24 will be as equal to 23 in motorhome sales. I'm reminded of what a cerebral guy you are and, and uh, uh, <laughs> you know, and we're kind of on a home stretch here. So uh, I, for one, appreciate the, the heck out of it, uh, Claude. Um, yep. I've taken some time to uh, talk with us. Well, I thank you very much, Sherm. I've always enjoyed everything you guys are doing. I watch your your podcast every week, and I, now I feel relevant again. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to you, Rick. Claude, thank you very much. Thank you guys very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Bye-bye.